Um, first of all, it's great to be back at Velocity, and I'm super excited to join the kind of Velocity family, especially on the, the 10th anniversary today. Um, so what I want to have a chat about this morning was cascading failure at scales. Um, just going to jump right in. Oh, really quick, Edgecar CDN architect at Verizon Digital Media Services. Um, so yeah, jumping right in. So what do I mean, what do I mean when I say scales? Um, at the upper end, uh, this is the Edgecar CDN as it exists today at least as it existed last week when I made this slide. Um, we're growing rather quickly. I think two years ago, our total network capacity was between two to three terabits per second. Uh, so yeah, growing rather quickly. Um, uh, the analogy I draw, I kind of feel like a 16-year-old who's just been handed the keys to a Lamborghini. And it's straddling that line between super excited with this amazing toy and absolutely terrified. Um, so yeah, we do a, a reasonable chunk of the global internet traffic. We support some of the biggest logos on the web, so we have um, a reasonably vested interest in resiliency at scale. The smaller scale we'll get into, but uh, first, just, just to kick it off, uh, what is a cascading failure? Well, um, one way to think about it is a cascading failure is when the failure of one component in your system can cause a ripple-on effect and take down the entire system, like dominoes falling or these really oddly arranged matches catching fire. Um, so how do we go about kind of preventing or working around this problem? What strategies do we use to make sure that this never happens? First one, load testing. We basically try to understand uh, the capacity of all the individual components in our system. Monitoring and alerting, we try to uh, have visibility into what production is actually doing as it relates to those theoretical like maximums and get alerting when it's getting close. Uh, traffic shaping or load balancing allows us to uh, kind of distribute the load evenly so that there's no hot spots within our network and we're getting the maximum, maximum throughput for the hardware that we have. And the one that doesn't get a lot of love, which is the one that I'm going to talk about today, is uh, containment. The idea of containment is you've done the first three, great. You're, something has still failed. A bug has snuck in. There's a massive surge in traffic that wasn't expected. Something happens, um, and, some, and something is going to fail. How do you limit the blast radius and provide the best quality service uh, possible in that, in that scenario? <clears throat> so starting at the smallest scale, containment on a single system. Um, you can imagine you know, an, edge, an edge node in our network has a variety of processes. We have the main process, which is the Sailfish web server delivering HTTP requests, and then a bunch of secondary and tertiary processes running on the box, everything from purging, log ingestion, monitoring, etc. cetera. Um, what we don't want is, an, is a bug in one of those tertiary systems to impact the performance of the main, the main function of the box. So we use control groups to wall off the secondary components so that even if something sneaks in, they can't run away with the entire system. Stepping up a level, containment within a pop. Um, if we assume that we've done perfect load balancing, perfect traffic shaping, every box within the pop is getting an equal share of the traffic, uh, how do we deal with a scenario where something is going to fail? So let's say a, a pop can do a million requests per second, and we're currently getting 1.1 million requests per second. Um, in that option, we can try to serve everything and degrade everything, or we can rate limit and decide to upfront basically return a 503 or a 429 or reject uh, that additional load that we know that we can't handle. So basically, fail quickly, let people retry. And it's worth noting that we've never actually had to do this, but this is what we would do in that sort of event. And stepping up again, containment globally. Um, what we do here is we basically carve up the world into separate regions, and then we use DNS to select regions of POPs to deliver traffic. So what that means, essentially, is that uh, someone in Australia, where I'm from, will only ever get requests, well, sorry, their traffic will only ever get served out of the Asia-Pacific region. So if we extrapolate from that, if all of APAC is on fire for some particular reason, uh, users and clients in North America and Europe will be not impacted at all which is nice. So we're basically drawing a border around different regions geographically um, and containing fail failures that way. Um, so just to summarize, there's four, four strategies, variety of scales. We layer each strategy, sorry, we layer each of those strategies at each scale and kind of the whole mess combined <laughs> is what we use to try to ensure we have some resiliency against cascading failures. Um, and if you're masochistic and want to hear me talk about this for more than five minutes, um, feel free to stop by our booth on the expert floor uh, or hit me up on Twitter. Thank you.